Hello everyone, this is Anand Radhakrishnan and this is my presentation on the study of channel estimation techniques used in LTE downlink. Uh, the study was conducted as part of the course project for the course called Wireless Communications. Uh, moving on, uh, the basic outline of the presentation is uh, in the first few slides uh, I will be giving an introduction to uh, long term evolution or LTE which is a fourth generation uh, wireless technology uh, following which uh, there will be an overview of orthogonal frequency division multiple access technology. Later on we will have a look at the various LTE physical layer characteristics or specifications which have been laid out by the third generation partnership project called 3GPP which is the standardization body for LTE and then on we will have an overview of the various channel estimation techniques uh, some of them uh, the conventional channel estimation techniques like least square and minimum mean square estimation techniques would be discussed the LTE simulating environment which was used for carrying out the simulations related to this project will be discussed in brief and uh, Finally, we will present the results and conclusions based on the simulations and also a performance analysis of the various channel estimation techniques and we will conclude with discussion on a few recent advances in the research in this area. So to begin with, long term evolution or LTE is the most widely used fourth generation wireless technology. So if you look at the evolution of wireless technologies over the years um, there has always been two competing technologies in each generation in second generation there was GSM and CDMA in third generation there was WCDMA and CDMA 2000 so LTE is um, being viewed as the a uh, single fourth generation technology to which the competing standardization bodies want to converge to and in that case in that sense LTE is the most widely used technology and it is being deployed in various parts of the world in a rapid manner so speaking about the various features of LTE uh, the most interesting feature of LTE is that it can achieve data rates up of up to 100 megabits per second uh, when the mobile is stationary and a few megabits per second lower when it is in motion and uh, the distinguishing feature of LTE is that it employs OFDMA as its multiple access technology in the downlink it also exploits various multiple input multiple output the MIMO the multiple antenna techniques and also a new technology called adaptive modulation and coding whereby the modulation and co coding schemes are adapted according to the current channel conditions as a result of making use of these features LTE is able to achieve higher spectral efficiency which is at least three to four times more than the best th third generation technology. So let's discuss about orthogonal frequency division multiple axis. So OFDMA is an extension, it is a multiple axis technology uh, which basically follows uh, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing or OFDM in a multi-user environment so as we know in OFDM we have a large number of narrow band and orthogonal subcarriers if you look at any of the other conventional multiple access technologies to achieve higher and higher data rates what we used to do was increase the bandwidth and we used to use a single carrier to modulate the entire modulate in the entire bandwidth 
and achieve higher data rate. But in OFDMA, uh, the approach is quite different. So in this, the entire available bandwidth is divided into a number of narrow band and orthogonal subcarriers. So, and each subcarrier is modulated using one of the conventional modulation techniques like QPSK or 16QAM or 64QAM as in the case of LTE. And the subcarriers are spaced at an interval of 1 over TS in the frequency domain where TS is one OFDM symbol period. So the important feature of OFDM is that not only are the subcarriers narrow band, they are orthogonal and the additional feature is that in contrast to frequency division multiplexing where you had to have guard bands between successive carriers, the subcarriers in OFDM can actually overlap in the frequency domain, thereby it increases the spectral efficiency. So this figure gives a block diagram of a generic OFDM transceiver system. So the individual blocks are serial to parallel converter, constellation mapper, IFFT block in parallel to serial and then you have the wireless channel and the reverse operations in the receiver at the bottom. So we shall discuss each of these blocks in detail in the next slide. So in OFDM um, the incoming sequence of bits is passed through a serial to parallel converter and it is split into a number of different parallel bit streams. So each of these bit streams is then passed in through a constellation mapper or a modulator which maps the bits into the corresponding symbols using one of the modulation techniques like BPSK, QPSK, QAM etc. And uh, this modulation is done onto the different subcarriers that we started with. The, n, the number of subcarriers is n and each of those subcarriers is modulated with the conventional modulation techniques. So until this point the signals or symbols are all in the, fre in the frequency domain and at this stage the symbols are passed through an inverse fast Fourier transform block which basically transforms the symbols in the different subcarriers into a time domain signal. At this stage a cyclic prefix is also added to the symbol. Cyclic prefix is nothing but um, appending or pre prefixing a, a symbol with a portion of the symbol. We shall discuss about cyclic prefix in the later slides. And if you look at the receiver block at the bottom, one of the components that is of interest to us in this project would be the frequency domain estimator and equalizer. So channel estimator um, tries to get the estimates of the channel gains, attenuations for different subcarriers and then the equalizer tries to nullify the, um, the channel effects. So let's take a look at the advantages of OFDMA or the reasons why OFDMA is being used uh, as the multiple access scheme for LTE. So as we discussed earlier, since the subcarriers are allowed to overlap on each other, OFDMA guarantees better spectral efficiency. And there is another additional feature of OFDMA. The subcarriers are all narrow band and they are orthogonal because of which we can assume that the coherence bandwidth of the channel is much larger than the bandwidth of the narrow band subcarrier. So this simplifies the channel estimation by allowing us to assume that the, the subcarriers undergo just flat fading and not frequency selective fading. 
and also the use of cyclic prefix in each OFDM symbol reduces the inter-symbol interference. One of the major disadvantages of OFDMA is that the OFDMA symbols cause very high peak to average power ratio or PAPR which brings down the efficiency of the power amplifier by a good margin. We shall take a look into the LTE physical layer specifications put down by 3GPP. So as we have already discussed LTE physical layer uses OFDMA in the downlink and SC FDMA or single carrier FDMA in the uplink. The most distinguishing feature of LTE compared to the other 3G technologies is that instead of having a fixed bandwidth as in the case of 3G, LTE allows flexible bandwidths ranging from 1.4 MHz to 20 MHz. The sub-carrier sub -carrier spacing for OFDM is fixed at 15 kHz for all of these several system bandwidths, so which uh, makes the number of subcarriers in a system bandwidth of 1.4 MHz to 73, whereas the number of subcarriers in a 20 MHz bandwidth system would be 1201. Um, this slide gives a schematic diagram of an LTE FDD or frequency division duplexing frame structure. As we can see, an LTE frame is 10 milliseconds in duration and the LTE frame is subdivided into 10 subframes each 1 millisecond long. Each individual subframes are further subdivided into two slots each of which is 0.5 milliseconds in length and each slot is made up of seven OFDM symbols when the normal cyclic prefix is used and it is made up of six OFDM symbols when an extended cyclic prefix is used. So this diagram gives a block a time of time and time frequency grid resource grid which is used in LTE. So on the vertical axis you have the frequency domain, frequency axis and on the horizontal you have the time axis. So as you can see each square in this grid represents one subcarrier and one OFDM symbol. The seven OFDM symbols put together constitute one downlink slot. So one, the, the smallest square in this grid is called a resource element and when you have uh, 12 subcarriers in the frequency axis and 7 OFDM symbols in the time axis with the subcarrier spacing of 15 kilohertz constitutes one resource block or RB. So a resource block is important because the downlink resources in LTE are allocated by the base station or the E node B as it is called in units of resource blocks or multiples of resource blocks.